So it, it was difficult to find a community. I kind of felt like I needed to build my own one. Hi everyone, welcome back to La Sociedad, the podcast series where we share the stories of Hispanic and Latino students in Ireland. Welcome to episode 7. Thank you so much for following this series of conversations. I'm Diana Vicesar, your host, and today we have Shia. She is a Mexican student at University College Cork, and I wanted to bring her to the podcast because she has an amazing story to share, of course. Um, so thank you so much, Shia, for, for coming to the podcast. No, thank you, Diana, for inviting me to be part of this. I know we spoke about this a while ago, but it's just until now that we managed finally to sit down and have a conversation. <laughs> so thanks. <laughs> yes, we were supposed to have this conversation like <laughs> three weeks ago, but for some reason we were, you know, like we always had like conflicts uh, of, of time. So we have to postpone it. But I'm so glad that we're finally here. Um, so, yeah, Shia, would you mind introducing yourself to the audience? Perfect. So um, my name is Shadani, actually, but I introduce myself as Shia. Um, I'm Mexican in Cork, and I've been living here now for almost five years. And it's been a really interesting journey, my experience living here. And and yeah, <laughs> the, here we are. <laughs> Yeah, in five years, five years is a long time already. And uh, yeah, I, I want to start by asking you, why, why Ireland? Why did you choose to, to move to Ireland? Yeah, it's a funny situation because I actually never really like planned or imagined to end up in Ireland or even living this long. I originally came here to like, you know, typical, like improve my English. Um, I was here as an au pair at first, so like childminder, I was living on a house of a, like a, a, with an Irish family a taking, care, taking care of one Irish kid. He was six years old at the time and I didn't research anything about Ireland. I didn't research anything about the place. I just like, you know what, they speak English and that's what I need, so see what happens. Um, And the experience as an au pair was only eight months, and then I just decided to stay longer. Um, and yeah, I got a job, I, time passed, I was meant to go back to Mexico in 2020, but COVID happened. <laughs> so my flights got canceled, like I was meant to be there by 10th of May, in, back to Mexico, I remember because I wanted to be there for Mother's Day and yeah, everything got cancelled, I was disappointed but also, you know, when some doors close, others open and that's how I literally feel with my experience here and yeah, uh, the opportunity eventually showed up uh, to enroll in college and here we are after mm -hmm. five years and counting. <laughs> wow, and how old were you when you came for the first time? I was just after turning 20. Wow, so, wow. Yeah. <laughs> And what Crazy. are you studying at UCC now? So currently I'm uh, studying world languages. It, that's how the undergrad is called. Uh, it's a career that allows you to study up to three languages, at least in the first year, and then you can like, specify in, in two or one. And it's really broad undergrad because it doesn't really seem to like, you know, you, you learn the language and the culture, but you won't be like a translator or anything. That's probably something you should consider doing in master's afterwards. But uh, it also includes a year abroad in the third year of college. Um, so I would be going abroad at some point. I'm really looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one of the things I love about, you know, uh, college or university here in Ireland, that you get a chance to do a placement, work placement for a year. And that's like so, mm -hmm. so exciting and so good for for your career. So like, wh mm -hmm. where are you planning to go? Or like, what type of uh, uh, job are you planning to get during that time? Well, like, um, um, <laughs> is it still all working? Like, I'm still working on the paperwork and stuff. And I don't like to say that something is official until it's like 100%, like that I'm in the plane. But if everything goes well, Um, I would be going to Tokyo for one year, uh, ah. so I am really excited. I just submitted all my paperwork yesterday, and yeah, I'm just like waiting, see what happens, visa approval and all that stuff, but really excited, and, and yeah, we'll see. 
Patty's so excited. I'm so, so excited for you. You're going to have such a great time. Um, yeah. And of course, you've been here for five years already. And, you know, I'm pretty sure you had many ups and downs, you know, like really good moments, but also difficult moments. So um, could you tell us, you know, like what have been some of the main challenges, you know, in this past five years for you? Yeah, I would say, well, at this point, you know, it seems like the biggest challenge have passed, but like at the very start, I, th I would say like the first three months living here was like the hardest, like, like, yeah, it was really lonely times um, because first of all, I used to live in the countryside. So um, it's not exactly countryside, but it was a village in the middle of nowhere. So if you wanted to go somewhere else, you needed a car. There was no bus to move around. So I need I needed to ask for like a lift from the host family to bring me other places. But I felt guilty because they were after having a full day of work. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, can you bring me to the town? I didn't feel comfortable doing that. Um, so that was really difficult because I didn't really have many friends. There was other Spanish girls who were also out there in the same village, but we didn't really match or have much in common and I tend to feel left out from their little group and that was really rough and I remember during three, those three months I was like crying every day uh, I it, it just got to a point that I was literally I didn't remember when was the last time I laughed out loud like a carcajadas or I didn't remember the last time I gave someone a hug and things like that you know that I got like so isolated but from that point on it just improved um, and yeah like you know I ended up meeting people who we had a more interest in common and it was nicer and then I went to Mexico for the summer and I came back and then that second return was also very hard then again I was crying every day I was like not I didn't know a lot of friends and it was I then again quite lonely um, but you know once you pass those those type of experiences it's like you realize that nothing can stop you like in the sense of like okay yeah it's it's bad and all but you know once you pass that it's great and um, so yeah uh, all the bad stuff always passes by <laughs> I love that you have such a positive mindset because I think that is mm. so helpful when studying abroad. Like, it doesn't matter, you know, like, where you go. It is so helpful to have that positive mindset that, you know, like, when a door closes, you know, like, another one will open up. And uh, um, you mentioned a couple of times that, you know, like, you felt really lonely during those uh, early days living here. So I can, you know, tell that, you know, community is really important to you. And especially because I know you are part of the leadership uh, leadership board of the Hispanic Society here at UCC and uh, like everyone I have talked to at the Hispanic Society everyone you know says amazing things about you and how amazing you are and how great of a leader you are so of course I want to talk about that I want to talk about um, community the Latino and the Hispanic community here in Ireland and I want to start by asking you, you know, how difficult or how easy was it for you to find a community of Latino people here? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, that's a really good question. Like when I started living in Ireland anyway, because I was not in the city, uh, for me, I found it hard because always everything is happening in the city. Um, all the fun stuff, all the events, all, this, all of those things are always in the city. So I felt really isolated. Um, but at least as a Mexican, there is a Mexican community in Cork uh, that is well established. It has like WhatsApp group, Facebook group, and they are very supportive of each other. So it's really nice at least to, to be there. Um, then again, like it's really easy to find Hispanic people in general or Spanish speakers. So obviously the it's more likely that you will find someone who is from Spain and they are usually also really good support obviously we might not still like we might not share the same background but you know we we share the same experience so you can support each other still um, so it it was difficult to find a community I kind of felt like I needed to build my own one and and yeah that kind of like helped to get by the whole scene Mm -hmm. And when you enroll at UCC, do you find a lot of Hispanic uh, and Latino students? And like, was there something similar to the Hispanic society back then? Yeah, that's that's the thing, right? When I enrolled in UCC, 
I was surprised to see that there wasn't really a Hispanic society or anything. So I was a bit surprised because obviously the Hispanic population in general in Cork is quite big. And I heard that the Hispanic society like died before COVID, like it just got, uh, no one was continuing, so it just got deactivated. Um, so I was a bit sad and I got the idea from the start of last year, so the start of my second year, I was like, oh, what if I started or I tried to like, open it up but I was like oh it's gonna be a lot of work it's gonna be a big commitment I won't have the time but you know what like I still like pushed it I consulted with some of the teachers from the department and they were all like yes totally we'll support you and so they helped to spread the word and then a lot of people came to me asking like oh I I like to be part of the committee to open up um, this society again and then it wasn't as hard as I thought and it is been a bit time consuming but obviously anything would be and it's worth it though because it's something that I like and I am happy to see that I can create this space that maybe other people like that can help people especially from Latin America or foreign backgrounds um, uh, this is space to meet other people and engage with people from here especially because I find that this might not be so easy to connect. It, sometimes it seems that there is not a, a space where you can get to know people from Ireland or like get them to, to know better. So I hope that with the society we can create a space like that. Mm -hmm. And everyone I have talked to uh, for this podcast, um, everyone you know emphasizes how important the Hispanic society has been for them. Like even even though it's been created like so you know like. Uh, like less than a year ago it's been really helpful for them because that's where they met their best friends that's where they met you know like their uh the people they hang out with you know and, and that's so so cool because i've been to a couple of the activities of the hispanic society and you can feel how everyone is so excited to be you know around each other to have that community where they can talk in spanish and um and I, i've also seen some irish students come to the activities and that is great you know because they're learning about the cultures they are learning about the language as well and uh Mm -hmm. Last week, last week uh, we had a, a, a um, an activity at a pub. It's not a pub. It's like more of a, of a bar, and I met so many people that I wouldn't have met otherwise. So thank mm -hmm. you. Like I have to yeah. thank you, because <laughs> like all the people I have interviewed so far, I met them at the activities of the Hispanic Society. So um, we've been talking a lot about this in, in previous uh, episodes too. But um, you know, That's I uh, with so. Uh, yeah as someone that has been here for five years you know you've been through all of it i want to know what has been your favorite part of what is your favorite part of living here in ireland you know like what what do you think makes ireland so special mm -hmm. it's a tricky question because obviously it's so different from where i'm from you know in general that a lot it's yeah, a lot of people uh, fall into this narrative of comparing, but like we shouldn't compare because every place and everything is special for its own reasons. Something that I like about Ireland and in Cork in particular is, uh, well, I'm really interested in its history, but current days, um, I'm really like surprised. It doesn't stop surprising me about how diverse it is. I couldn't meet people from so many different backgrounds if I was uh, back in Mexico just because there is not this medium to meet people and like it's just such a small city but also so like easy to handle and travel and walk and just meet people and I love that that you can meet people from the other side of the world from any other continent like it's just crazy and just if you are like willingly enough it's not hard to just connect with others like there is a lot of events happening around the city all the time and it's something that you need to look into it but you know once you move around those uh, mediums you it's not hard to yeah access to these events mm -hmm. yeah and in in the five years that you've been here um, do you ever experience like uh, some misunderstanding or you know cultural differences with Irish people? Mm, well, I think there is a lot of differences, but um, like I don't know the whole 
pop lifestyle. It's something that it took me a while to get my head around it, but now I'm so into it. Like, <laughs> um, so, um, so that would be one of it. Like, obviously, the socializing it's so different. Like in Mexico, we meet around food, around eating, around dinners, all that stuff. Here, it's more all around the drink, and it's just different. Um, also, yeah. I don't know, there is a lot, of, a lot of little things like that that is like, oh, this is different, this is uh, not how I would remember. But also, I've, I've been here for so long that now I get, you know, a reverse a cultural shock or however it's called, you know, like whenever I go back to Mexico or to visit in Spain, it's like, oh, what? What is this? Even, I, I don't know, just landing and hearing everything back in Spanish is like, oh my God, I'm home. So it's nice. I have to say, in the time that I've been here, I only been in Mexico for two times, so I have become really Irish <laughs> because you know <laughs> I don't go home that often, unfortunately, because of COVID. It was difficult, and before that, I only went there once. And last summer, I went there for the second time. So obviously, when you go back, you try to be there as long as possible. So I stay for like two months, and yeah, it's just different. Yeah, and uh, one question that I usually ask people on the podcast is, what would you want Irish people or people in general to understand about your culture, about your country? Mm -hmm. I think it would be important to know that we in Mexico, we're very social. We, we love like socializing, we love dancing, we love meeting up for a coffee, for a chat. We, we just love getting to know other people and it comes across maybe as cr like nosy or something like that and we are kind of nosy so it's just like the way it is um but it's something that i really like and i have learned to become like very like you know not getting involved with in other people's business but obviously i still i'm still latina so at the end of the day it's like oh yeah but tell me more tell me more what happened <laughs> Um, el chisme, el chisme. Exactly, exactly. The, I live for the chisme, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, in general, uh, at least for me, uh, that I consider myself quite social, um, I just love getting to know other people and, like, all the little details. Like, that's what makes people interesting. You don't need to be fucking fam uh, famous or anything <laughs> to be interesting, you know? E even the most regular banal thing about your life can be interesting if you manage to make it somehow <laughs> yeah that's true mm -hmm. we latinos we know about that <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. exactly yeah yeah and you know one of the reasons why i started this podcast is you know um to help future latino and hispanic students who might want to come to ireland so i have to ask you you know what advice would you have for uh latino or hispanic students who might be listening to this and you know they're thinking about coming to ireland either for work or for for school mm -hmm. so i think there is um, i would shorten the advice like there is two ways to go to do things i think like there is people who comes and obviously it's important to have a community and we all need a sense of belonging so it's always easier to just go to your own community but if you come here wanting to improve your english or get get to know other cultures stay away from that community and i mean it's contradictory and it's just but it's so true and it's not because i want to you know uh, give like turn back into my own community but I think the reason why I got to improve my English so much is because during the time I was living in the countryside I literally there was times that I didn't have anyone to speak Spanish to only that with my family when I was video calling and my Spanish was weird <laughs> they were like you don't know how to speak Spanish anymore what happened um, and I mean it's tough it's really difficult but something is it's just something that you know how they say here, like, you need to throw yourself on the deep end and, like, just learn how to swim. Um, mm -hmm. So that's something that it was hard, but it definitely helped me. And once you pass that type of stuff, it's like, you know what? Nothing can stop me. <laughs> so it's really empowering. And I recommend people to know that there is always light at the end of the tunnel. And it might be something difficult that you're passing right now, but it will get better. So especially if you are in Erasmus or just here under, like, uh, one year six months you only have six months to be here you only have one year to be here or eight months whatever um make most of it because it will end and it will be difficult 
but it would be worth it too. And so that that's one side. On the other side, it's all always reconforting to have that community. So do keep in touch with one or two or a few people who it's your it makes it your home here. It makes your sense of belonging here. It's important to have that people that you can rely on. Um, and yeah, just just go for it. I think <laughs> is my advice. <laughs> Great advice, great advice, <laughs> and it's totally true, you know. Because sometimes I have, I have, I'm guilty of this. Like when I first, uh, I'm originally from Paraguay, but I go to school in the U.S. And when I first moved to the U.S., I was, I was just like trying to be with my community all the time, like trying to be with other Spanish-speaking uh, people all the time. And then like, and then like, I my English got so bad, like I start forgetting words and stuff like that. And I was like, no, I need to interact with like local people so that I can get to know more about the culture and, you know, like improve my English. So I totally agree with you on that. Um, but I, I would also like to ask you, what would be your advice for Latino and Hispanic people who are already here in Ireland and might be feeling homesick or, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, feeling like they don't have that sense of community yet? Mm -hmm. I think for homesick, you know, cooking something nice for yourself is always good. <laughs> yeah. So um, I think for me, sometimes it's like, okay, I'm going to treat myself and spend a whole day cooking something that it really hits home, you know? That's something that just, it's such a throwback every every time. Also, um, just um, keep in touch with the family, of course, and the friends from there. That's something for me that it's complicated because I have such a mixed feelings. I kind of get really sad when I talk to my family and friends, but also it motivates me. So I don't know, just finding a balance between that. And it's just, um, I know I have my support from my family and friends from there. So it's nice to talk to them, listen to them, know how they are. And it's always uh, good. So don't left them totally behind <laughs> at all and um, and just like it's not hard to meet people who is from a background that is similar from you so if you can have someone who is from your same country or from your same city or even just spanish speaker i suppose that could help a lot because you are in the same boat and you might not have enough or a lot in common with this other person but remember that you are on the same boat so don't turn their back on them <laughs> uh, just i don't know respectfully perhaps like <laughs> do your own business but you know support each other i think that's something good to, to be reminded of yeah no that's great great advice and, and and i want to thank you again for for coming to the podcast because i know it was <laughs> difficult to find a time that will work for both of us but i really wanted to have you here because so many people told me you know how how hard you have worked to you know to put together all the resources and you know all the all the opportunities to to meet uh, each other in in the hispanic space so thank you so much seriously and like is there anything else that you would like to share with the audience today um I think just don't be afraid of trying new things. Don't be afraid of uh, traveling on your own, experiencing new things. Like I, I recommend traveling, like solo traveling. It's really good for meeting people, staying in hostels. Just don't be afraid of being alone because I think we are all alone <laughs> in a way. So <laughs> you might as well do it, but in another country. <laughs> exactly. It's not the same to cry, I don't know, and then crying in Ireland. So... <laughs> Exactly. Um, thank you so much for inviting me anyway. It's been a pleasure. And, you know, we're here anytime. Um, yeah. Keep coming to the events for, from the Hispanic Society. <laughs> I will. I will be there next week and the week after. <laughs> so, Perfect. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Seriously. And thank you, everyone, for following the conversations uh, here on the, uh, on the podcast. So I hope to see you in the next episode. And thank you.